Hello, welcome to the introductory movie on work energy and simple machines. This first movie is a fairly descriptive one and teaches you the underlying fundamentals of work and energy. Energy being mechanical energy, energy representing work. Work is energy. Work is mechanical energy. There are two types of energy. There's mechanical energy and there's heat energy. Mechanical energy is energy from motion. Remember we studied mechanics. We're still studying mechanics, which is a study of motion and forces and how they interchange. So when we talk about energy, we'll talk about kinetic energy, which are measured which is measured in joules. We'll talk about potential energy, which is measured in joules. We'll talk about work which is also measured in joules a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared you'll remember that newton was a kilogram meters per second squared uh, momentum kilogram meter per second nothing new or unusual about that but a joule is also specialized and that is a kilogram meter squared per second squared i will go over this again in the course of the of the video. So good luck. Have your calculators out again and if you have any questions write them down and see me the next day. A 50 kilogram box slides across the floor and its velocity decreases from 20 meters per second to 5 meters per second. What change in kinetic energy did the box undergo to reduce its velocity? Listed here is the equation for the change in kinetic energy. Please note that in the parentheses it says V final squared must v minus V initial squared. It is difference of squares. This is a major mistake that students make. It is not a binomial squared as in VF minus VI squared. It is a difference of squares. Make sure you're very careful that it's VF squared minus VI squared. Plugging into the equation, we see that it's going to be the final, velo final velocity is 5 squared minus the initial velocity 20 squared. And that's going to be a negative 375 meters squared per second squared. Now, that's very significant because that's going to be multiplied by 1 half 50. And the answer is going to be a negative 9,375 kilogram meter squared per second squared. Be very certain you understand that a kilogram meter squared per second squared is the same thing as a joule. You learned in chemistry joules and calories. A joule is kilogram meter squared per second squared. Do you remember when we did forces? A newton was kilogram meters per second squared. Well, and momentum was kilogram meters per second. And we didn't call it anything other than kilogram meters per second. However, energy, mechanical energy, mechanical energy, that's what joules are, mechanical, not heat, mechanical that it's kilogram meter squared per second squared is a joule. That's, what, yeah, that's how you denote that. And it's going to be negative, and that should make sense to you intuitively, that there's going to be negative energy involved because the box stopped. It was stopped. It had to give up its kinetic energy. It went from moving, which is the whole idea of kinetic energy, the energy of motion, to being stopped. So it's going to give up its energy. So it's going to be, in a, in a sense, an exothermic activity, where in chemistry you learn that, ex that exothermic was giving up its energy. So as it was moving and then slowing down, it gave up its energy. And it would be exothermic. So that should make sense to you intuitively, that it's negative 9,375 joules. In that same problem, how much work does the frictional resistance of the floor do upon the block? Well, 
the frictional force is the net force and that net force is going to be applied over a certain distance because that's what work is work is force times distance now we don't have the distance but we know we know that the work that's done on the block is equal to the work that the block does on the floor so it would be equal and opposite so in this case work done by the frictional forces is equal and opposite the change in kinetic energy therefore would be plus nine three seven five joules think of it this way that the floor is absorbing that energy so absorption means endothermic now in part c of that same problem we're given the distance over which the floor acts on the block and it's given at as 20 meters we know that work equals force times distance solving for force you're dividing both sides by distance therefore force will equal work divided by distance filling into the equation it would be negative 9375 divided by 20 would be a negative 469 now that should make sense to you intuitively because friction is going to be a negative force because it's contrary to the motion now before I proceed with the next problem let's review a little bit of what we learned in the last problem well I'd say the most important thing that you learned is that work is force times distance work is force times distance work is force times distance so there's a movement there it's mechanics as I've called it before the study of motion and forces mechanics well force times distance is is work and work is mechanical energy work is measured in joules work is measured in joules joules is a measure of mechanical energy force times distance and that's going to be equal to joules otherwise known as work joules is the labor remember it's kilogram meter squared per second squared so that's the most important thing I think that you understand second thing is that kinetic energy is actually the energy of motion wait, wait a second I just said motion if it's the energy of motion <clears throat> again we're talking about mechanics so kinetic energy is a measure of mechanical energy as well so kinetic energy is also in joules interesting note if you look at the unit labels of kinetic energy and you work it out in terms of dimensional analysis what dimensional analysis really is the kinetic energy is one half mv squared and that would work out to kilograms meter squares per second squared the same exact unit labels of work so kinetic energy is a measure of mechanical energy as is work potential energy is also a measure of the potential to do work or the potential of mechanical energy and if you look at the equation for potential energy as we will look at in this problem then you'll see that mgh mgh kilograms meter squared per second squared potential energy kinetic energy work and potential energy all have they all have the same exact unit labels now back to the problem a 500 kilogram pig is standing at the top of a muddy hill on a rainy day the hill has a vertical drop of 30 meters the pig slips and begins to slide down the hill what is the pig's speed at the bottom of the hill use the law of conservation of energy well the law of conservation of energy conveniently stated is that the change in kinetic energy equals the change in potential energy putting those two equations side by side one half mv squared equals mgh the masses cancel and I'm left with one half v squared equals gh 
I can rearrange that equation, one-half v squared equals gh, any way I want to, and that will be evident on the next slide. To apply the equation and to determine the velocity of the pig's speed at the bottom of the hill, we would solve one-half v squared equals gh for v. So in this case, v equals root 2gh plugging in square root of 2 times 10 times 30 is 24.5 meters per second 24.5 meters per second would be the speed of the pig at the bottom of the hill while on the moon the Apollo astronauts enjoyed the effects of a gravity much smaller than that on earth if Neil Armstrong jumped up on the moon with an initial speed of 1.51 meters per second to a height of 0.700 meters, what amount of gravitational acceleration did he experience? What does that mean? Gravitational acceleration. How are we going to calculate that? Well, gravitational acceleration is simply another word for g. Well, first of all, a vertical leap of 0 0.700 meters is very good. I challenge you to try it yourself and you'll find that your vertical leap will be a small fraction of what Neil Armstrong's was on the moon. Now you're using the equation simply to calculate g. So you're rearranging 1 half v squared equals gh for g, v squared over 2h, and you're coming up with g. That's all you're really doing. So in the next slide, the next slide will show the answer and good luck see if you can get see if you got the right answer and goodbye plugging in we get g equals 1.63 meters per second squared make sure that you verify this on your calculator and that you know how to arrive at the equation g equals v squared over 2h now also please make sure you understand why delta KE equals delta PE. Why the loss in kinetic energy will be an increase in potential energy and vice versa. Have a great day. If there are any questions, please write them down and see me in class the next day.